As congressional Democrats work to cram a repeal of the SALT cap into the reconciliation budget package, if you followed that, you've been following this pretty closely, we wanted to revisit some reporting from the Daily Poster's Emma Rindelsbacher. Back in May, Emma revealed that some of the SALT cap repeals most ardent supporters in Congress are members who stand to financially gain from seeing it gone. Three of the 10 leaders of the bipartisan SALT caucus, Representatives Josh Gottheimer, Mikey Sherrill, and Jamie Raskin, pay more than $10,000 in property taxes, according to property records reviewed by the Daily Poster. That means a SALT cap repeal would personally benefit Gottheimer, Sherrill, and Raskin $75,000 in federal tax deductions combined. Now, if the full repeal were to go through, the federal government would lose some $600 billion in revenue, and 80% of that $600 billion would go right into the pockets of the richest 5% of Americans. After some very public pushback from Senator Bernie Sanders, the repeal suppo supporters proposed a compromise on Wednesday night. They now want to increase, not repeal, the cap to $72,500 through 2031. Here to discuss this new development is the founder of The Daily Poster, former senior advisor to the Sanders campaign and editor-at-large at Jacobin, David Sirota. David, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. So, you know, what do you make of the, at first they were talking about getting rid of it, now they might uh, increase it. What are you, what's your reading? Well, look, I think this is moving in somewhat of, a, of the right direction. Let's remember six months ago, five months ago, you had this group of, of House Democrats and a, a couple of senators from these uh, blue, blue states and affluent blue districts demanding a full repeal be put into this bill. Uh, and as you said, a full repeal would deliver uh, the vast majority of its benefits to the richest 5% of the country. It would actually be a more regressive tax policy than the Trump tax cuts uh, themselves. Uh, and so the fact that they have had to uh, pare back at least the proposed repeal to limit uh, it, to try to limit which uh, income levels would, would benefit from this, I think is at least some recognition uh, that the policy of a full repeal is completely ridiculous. Uh, we don't know the final outlines of a deal just yet, but what's being talked about is to essentially cap the income level uh, that, uh, that SALT tax breaks uh, can be unlimited for. Essentially saying, I, I've, I've read $400,000, $500,000 a year of income uh, that you wouldn't be able to then fully write off all these tax deductions. Uh, and yes, uh, members of Congress themselves who have been pushing this stand to benefit. And it's not just those House members that you mentioned. I mean, Chuck Schumer, uh, in a previous tax return from a few years ago that he returned, uh, showed uh, a large amount of state and local tax deductions that would benefit from, from a repeal of the cap. Cory Booker from New Jersey, uh, same thing. And let's remember, Bob Menendez yesterday, uh, not exactly a, a super progressive guy, and he's from New Jersey, basically essentially said a full repeal would be a giveaway to millionaires and billionaires. And in fact, he is correct. Right. And so Representative Josh, Got Josh Gottheimer, who, you know, one of the leading advocates of a full repeal, his, his talking point, if you corner him on this, is, well, hey, look, there's, if you could be a firefighter in Bergen County, New Jersey, and you're going to get hit with this extra tax, that completely falls apart when you, when you raise the cap rather than eliminate it. You know, there's no firefighter out there making $5 million a year, except maybe some hedge fund guy who's doing some volunteer EMT work <laughs> on, on the side. And so the, the gap between the talking point that Gottheimer needs in order to justify uh, you know, his preferred policy and the reality uh, seems to be awfully, awfully big. Do you think that gap is big enough that, th that people like Sanders and now, interestingly, Menendez will be able to come in and say, OK, look, Fine, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand a year. You're like you held us up, we're, we'll we'll give you some more of a break, but we're not giving it to the, the all of the rest of these incredibly rich people. Well, the way to look at it is, is that there was a small, a very small segment of middle class people. Uh, most middle class people do not pay, uh, w are covered by the $10,000 cap. Uh, the, the, they, they get $10,000 of uh, write-offs. Or they take, by the way, the standard deduction on their tax, uh, tax forms. So there's a tiny sliver of folks who are middle class who got slightly hit by the $10,000 cap, very, very slightly. And, and the cynical view, which I think is what's really going on, is that people like Josh Gottheimer 
are using that tiny sliver of the population to try to justify a tax cut for themselves and a, a massive tax cut for themselves and a massive tax cut for their wealthy donors. And so I think you're right. If you uh, essentially get rid of that tiny sliver, you cover that tiny sliver by raising the income threshold, then what's the argument? Then the argument becomes almost explicitly, uh, this is we just need to give millionaires and billionaires new tax breaks. And what's amazing about this is that even Joe Biden's uh, pollsters uh, have said that raising taxes on the wealthy is the most popular uh, proposal of all of their ec economic proposals. So shoving in a massive giveaway to the top 5% of the country uh, is a betrayal of Biden's own uh, own yeah. uh, campaign promises and a, and a betrayal of what the public says it wants. And I think that's right. You really don't want, you know, the, the six firefighters that this affects to become the face of the of the hedge fund billionaire push the same way that the three, you know, small farmers, you know, became the, the face of getting rid of the estate tax entirely. Uh, so you're, you're probably right that just tactically carve out those firefighters, move on with this and, and keep sticking it to the billionaires. But, um, you know, th thank you. Oh, by the, and by the way, if people haven't checked out David Sirota's uh, podcast, uh, Meltdown, I just finished it the other day, uh, an excellent look at the financial crisis and its aftermath and how it led to where we are today. David, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Right. And we'll have more rising right after this.